Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Jake Harris, and this is the Week 2 Game of the Week Southern Torch Coaches Show. Here with Coach Dale Pruitt, is on his seventh year back here at Plainview. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing good. Good, good. Good to see you. Man, it's good to be here. Thanks so much for having us. Well, just got a few questions for you going up. Um, you had a huge win last week against Crossville, 28-6. to Tell us a little bit about what you learned seeing that first team in action. Well, you know, we actually improved from the jamboree, which is very important. And most of the time you improve more from your first game to your second game, which I don't know if you want to count the jamboree or the last game. But anyway, we had good improvement last week. Uh, uh, we had some, several breakdowns in the jamboree. We felt like that uh, we addressed that and done a better job last week. And felt like our kids went out there in a workmanlike attitude and, and, and did what they had to to win. We only had one turnover the first ball game, which is good. Uh, you know, and only had 20 yards of, uh, I'm sorry, we had five yards of penalties. They had 20, we had five. So that's, that's very good the first week, you know, as long as you eliminate some of them first game mistakes. Uh, hope we build off that this week. Uh, get a little more physical and uh, able to compete with Gerald. Well, Coach, this week you opened up in region play. Last week was out of region. So does your practice regime, does it does it change from one week to the next when you go into the region, especially against a team that's undefe you know, that won their first game in Geraldine? No, our preparation is the same each week. It doesn't matter who we play. I think that's very important because if you're not real careful, your kids will get up ready to play for one week and they'll be flat the next, and a loss is a loss in the region. So uh, we, uh, we try to each week prepare the same. Uh, some weeks it looks like we don't prepare, I'm sure, but uh, we, we hope that we had the same preparation this week. I think our kids are eager to play. They know it's going to be a physical contest. Drolling won the region last year. They got a lot of kids back. They're very physical, and, and uh, you know, we get, just got to tee it up Friday night and See what happens. Well, we, I came to your Jamboree game, watched a little bit of it. There was a little bit of issue in the secondary. Has that been resolved? I noticed a little bit of confusion on defense then, but that's been two weeks. Well, we uh, had a little bit. Uh, we, uh, but you know, I, uh, the, did played pretty well in the secondary, except for about three plays. And about three plays is the difference. You know, had a total bust on when we had a league and, and let them catch a touchdown pass. We didn't even guard a guy. We got confused back there. Uh, missed a tackle and they ended up scoring and are setting up a score and uh, didn't play the right coverage in a trip set one time and, and let them catch the football and, and make a big play. But you know that's why you play jamborees and that's why you try to play as many people as you can in jamborees to get them all under the, the fire. And uh, we hope that some of them issues have helped themselves. We didn't miss as many tackles last week. Uh, we didn't have as many breakdowns in the secondary last week. In fact, uh, you know, uh, our starters actually had a shutout, which, uh, you know, that's always good. Uh, but we're playing a much better football team this week. Well, I had the pleasure of covering Geraldine Fife last week. That was game of the week. Week one, I had the pleasure of covering that. Now, some things I noticed were the fact that, you know, Geraldine is a, is a downhill football team. How do you prepare for that this week in practice? Well, it doesn't matter which offense they're in, which they can run. They can run two tights, double wing. They can run uh, wing T, slot wing. They run the high formation, back strong, back weak, whatever. But whatever they're in, they're downhill as far as physical, and they're going to run the football. So, you know, you play a lot of it like a, you know, almost like you're playing a goal line defense in some ways because you've got to get an extra guy in the box. And uh, so, that's what we'll try to do, and it's no secret. And, and you know what they do is not a secret. They're gonna line up, and they're gonna come down the hill. They're gonna get a hat on a hat. And they're gonna let the them good backs run with the football, take care of it, including the quarterback. And you know that, that's not an easy chore to stop that. Well, you just took the next question right out of my mouth. I was gonna ask you if you expected any surprises from Geraldine. Well, you know they do like all good teams that run it like that. But they'll run it, run it, run it, and then give you a play action and, and throw it over the top because their quarterback can. they got some guys that can go catch it. Uh, so, you know, they play a physical brand of football. And so, you know, the deal you got to do is you got to match them physically first, and, uh, you know, then you just got to make a, another play or two more than they do. Now, focusing on your team a little bit, tell us what you think your biggest weakness going into a team as hard-nosed as Geraldine Tell me what your biggest weakness is against a team like them, if, if you will. Well, uh, you know, always 
you know, you got to stop the run to win a football game. And you play against a team that runs it very well. So, you know, what, what we want to do is uh, keep them from having third and twos. If they got third and twos, third and threes all night long, they're, they're hard to stop. And if they do that, they get the ball and they'll keep it seven or eight minutes. And so that limits how many times you get the football. So, uh, you know, we'd love to have some three and outs. I think that's big against them. If you can get some three and outs against them, and if you never, uh, it's always very fortunate if you get ahead of them. And, uh, of course, it is against a lot of teams, but especially ball control teams. Well, I've asked you plenty about the team. I've asked you plenty about Jerley and plenty about your team. I want to break down some individual players. Tell me who the sleeper on your team is. I mean, we know Jace Pruitt's solid. We know Caleb Spears is solid. Who's the guy that we haven't seen yet that we can expect big things from maybe this upcoming week? Well, I don't want to, you know, put the monkey on anybody's back, but, you know, we've got some kids that uh, have not played a whole lot of football as far as either they're young or have not been playing football or whatever. But, you know, the biggest surprise, of, of, uh, again, for us so far is, is Ian. And uh, he has uh, uh, come in from Fort Payne. He was here, moved, went to Fort Payne and come back. And uh, uh, he's starting at linebacker for us. Plays some guard and some running back for us. So, uh, but Ian Richards has been a very, very pleasant surprise. And, uh, you know, he's the one that, uh, that has, I think he's helped our football team as much as anybody. He's got a great attitude. He's coming here and, uh, you know, he may not be the one that scores a touchdown or whatever, but he's going to prevent a few, and he's going to help block some for some folks that does. So I, I'd say he's a sleeper. Uh, you know, if you, uh, we have some young kids that, that have potent, potentially to have some, you know, big nights any night, which uh, John David Martin is a tenth grader that uh, has a, has a lot of talent, a lot of talent, a lot of ability, and, and uh, he's been pretty solid for us. For us game and a half and uh, you know but uh, pretty much we're a blue collar football team and it, and it takes us off uh, but that's a couple maybe a newcomer and a, and a kid that's an older newcomer but uh, uh, and we have several seniors that hadn't played a whole lot that are playing this year that uh, you know should get better every time we go out there. So. Well Caleb Spears last yeah. week had 14 carries for 141 yards Unbelievable athlete. I believe he was a transfer from Scottsboro, if I remember correctly. You got him a few years ago. Tell me how he's progressed as a player, and do you expect big things from him this season, especially this week? Well, you know, he has he stepped up. Last year we used him some at fullback and some at linebacker, and, and uh, we've had a couple of injuries on the team, that, that so he's had to carry the load. And especially on offense, we've had some, uh, you know, Bobo is – has been injured. He'll be back somewhat Friday night. We don't know to what extent. And uh, uh, Payne Anderson has been injured. He'll be back, but we don't know what extent. But neither one of them have played in the first two ball games. So uh, Payne, uh, Caleb has stepped it up and, and carried the ball well. And, and he always runs with the load because he's a he's a heavy kid. And uh, we're really, uh, you know, uh, he's been having to be a workhorse, but not necessarily by design, but by People getting banged up and uh, him stepping up, and we're tickled to death. You play the hand you dealt, right? Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what, it's enough about your team. Let me move on to Geraldine. There's three names I'm going to throw out there. You tell me what you know about them. Jake Maddox, the, quarter, uh, at Geraldine, uh, the quarterback at Geraldine. Right. You got Marcus Davis, who surprised me really big last week. And then last but not least, Devin Tothero. Tell me what you expect from those three this week. Well, that's going to be a solid ball game. They all three play well each week. Uh, the Maddox, the quarterback, he was a running back all through his high school years. Their other quarterback got hurt in an accident. They moved him to quarterback. Now then, he is still a running back at quarterback, but he can throw the football. Throws the football well, but he does a great job turning negative plays into positive plays on third down. He kept drives alive for him last week. You know, he does a good job hiding the football. He does a good job, uh, you know, carrying out his fakes. He's just a good football player. He also plays some in the secondary, which uh, he's you know, solid back there. Uh, Tothero is one of those kids that, uh, you know, he plays lights out each week. Uh, 
he is, you know, my opinion, he's their MVP. Uh, even though the the back carries it so much and he's very good, but Father Row is a very good defensive player, and so is all three of them guys. But he is, a, he's just a, you can tell he's the quarterback on defense. He, he gets them lined up, he tells them what to do, plays hard every play, and on offense, he blocks hard every time. Blocks extremely well, and of course, when he runs the football, he runs extremely well. He's just a good football player. He's a very good high school football player. The Davis kid, he's, he's blessed with a lot of talent. You know, he's 200 pounds, runs a 4-5 something. He's a straight ahead guy. His brother's at Jacksonville State, doing great as far as last I knew. He is, uh, he's an eye back. He is a natural eye back, and you don't, you don't, we usually don't have a lot of natural eye backs around here. He runs the ball very well. He also is a linebacker playing in the secondary, and that's not by choice. But he's a physical football player, and uh, he can also block well. When they're in the double wing stuff, he is a very good blocker. Uh, a lot of you know, a lot of you fans don't really see all of that as far as. But I promise you, all the coaches know that Tutherro and Davis, they them suckers, they block for each other. They're very unselfish. You know, they're good football players. Well, one more big question. Now, last week, Trent Thrash was held to 48 yards. You know, from five, Geraldine did a really good job of shutting the run down. Do we expect to see you guys air it out, maybe spread the field out some this week? I think you got to mix it. Uh, you're not going to line up and run it every time at Geraldine and, and uh, uh, you know, be one-dimensional. But if you don't run it, you're going to be one-dimensional the other way. So I think you got to mix it. You got to uh, do, a, you know, do some things that uh, that maybe it's not characteristic and. and, and uh, uh, take care of the football. You don't want to go in there and do a bunch of crazy stuff and, you know, fumble the ball, throw picks, get penalties, and all, take yourself out of a chance of playing. Last year, as poorly, poorly as we start, started, I think it was like a 17 to 7 high time, 17 to something like that. And, uh, you know, we fumbled the opening kickoff and they scored about three plays and then they scored once. We didn't get lined up after a timeout off of a unbalanced deal, and uh, you know we're gonna be a lot smarter than that this year, and not spot them, make them play four quarters, and you know see if they'll make a mistake. Coach, I got one more question for you, and it's kind of off the cuff, and I don't even know if you'll answer it or not, but you got to take you can't blame me for taking a shot. Give me a prediction, how you feel it coming into this week. You got a score prediction? You got a huh. prediction of any kind? I don't ever have a prediction. Uh, you know, uh, the, as a football coach. What you want your kids to do is play the best they can, okay? And that's if you get beat or if you if you win. Uh, there's been a lot of times that I've walked off the field and we've won, and I'm thinking, you know, how bad we poorly we played. You know, and it, it's it's also tough. You you feel real tough for the kids when you walk off the field and you say, man, they laid their hearts, you know, they laid it on the line tonight. Maybe that's something I could have done that could have helped them win. And so, you know, I just want them. Suckers to line up and play 48 minutes and play six seconds at a time and forget about the last play and play the next play. If they'll do that, then, you know, if we win, that's great. If we come up a little bit short, this is the second game of the year. We've got to play eight more regular season games. We need to get better each week, and, you know, who knows? We might play them again. Well, Coach, thanks so much for letting us be here. We've enjoyed it. Got a very talented coach with a very talented football team. It's Jake Harris with seventh year head coach Dale Pruitt expecting a big win his first game in the region. Southern Torch Game of the Week, week two. Be sure to check us out on southerntorch.com for a live stream. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jake Harris here with Southern Torch. That is uh, week two of the coaches' show here, the game of the week. We got Geraldine versus Plainview this week. Coach, how you doing? Good, good, good. Man, it's good to be back here. Thanks again for having us. No problem, no problem. Big win last week. Got another big game this week. It don't get any easier. No looking back for this guy right here. Well, Coach, I just got a few questions for you. I know you got stuff going on. We'll try to be quick. Tell me a little bit about how you think Plainview is going to be a different ball club than what Fife was. Fife always has probably more team speed than anybody we ever see to the playoffs. Just team speed. They And Plainview is more of a bigger type team than a, and not as much speed as Fife's got. But they're, they're, they're just a little bit different. Okay, now 
You guys held Trent Thrash down to 48 yards last week. Is there big expectations out on Caleb Spears? Y'all want to shut him down? He had 141 against Crossville. We want to try to stop the run. Uh, we didn't stop the other back at five. He had about 140 something. So <laughs> we didn't do a very good job stopping him. But we we want to try to stop the run. Is what we want to try. To do. Well, now you said stop the run, but Plainview known a little bit to spread the ball out. And Jace Pruitt, junior quarterback, he's a great passer. How is your secondary? How are they going to handle that pressure? We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of new faces back there. They're getting better each week, but we got some new faces back there. Okay, so the so the jury's still out on the secondary. The jury's still out. Uh, they, uh, like I said, they got some better as the game went on last week, but uh, we, we still got ways to go. Well, a long way to go. This is your first region game. Does anything change in practice with this being your first region game? Was last week kind of just a test? Uh, I wouldn't call five a test. <laughs> They're a good team. Uh, uh, practice once the season go, go starts, it's just kind of the same. Monday we're going to do this, this, and this, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, it's just you start getting in a routine once the season gets started. It's just a different opponent each week. I got you. Now, last week we talked a little bit about rivalries, and you said Plainview at five can kind of become a rivalry other than Crossville. So tell us how you think Plainview is this year as far as a rivalry. Do you think this game will decide the region? I don't know if you can ever say the first region game will decide the region because you got <laughs> – some other teams, you know, has got something to say about that. So I think that's way too early to say something like that. Well, there's a lot of people putting a lot of hype on this game, and that's one reason we picked it. We wanted to cover it. It's going to be a huge game. Do, do you think it'll be a battle of running downhill? Who can run the ball harder and who can last longer? You don't ever know. Coach Pruitt's always got something <laughs> that you're not expecting. I mean, we don't know what it is. We tried to cover it all bases, but I don't know exactly what it'll wind up being. Well, one more question for you, and this is something I asked Coach Pruitt as well. Um, we're talking about predictions. Do you have any predictions going into the game, how you feel about it going in? I don't, I don't, no, I don't ever have <laughs> predictions. Uh, I know we got to play mistake-free football and play physical football, and uh, mentally we got to be where we're supposed to be. But uh, after that, I mean, you know, turnovers and things like that, you really don't have that much control over. I got you. Now, any injuries from last week? No, we we come out of it. was a physical game, and we was pretty lucky. <laughs> but we come out of it healthy. Now, Devin Totherow laid a huge hit against, I, know, I think it was Trent Thrash to come up the A-gap. Totherow laid a really big hit on him. Do you think he can provide that kind of muscle against uh, against Caleb and maybe Payne Anderson's coming back? Well, I imagine they're per probably going to be trying to account for him, be sure that don't happen. But, uh, uh you know, he's, he was the defensive player of the year last year in the region. And, uh, he was all county and all region. So, you know, you kind of expect good things out of him. And uh, he's, you know, he's started since the 10th grade. So, I mean, you know, you kind of expect good things from him. Well, Coach, this will be my last question. This ain't even football related. Is it your idea to put deep fried Oreos in the concession stand? <laughs> no, but I think it's a darn good idea. I think <laughs> that's a very... Very anything deep fried's good. We fell in love with it last week. Coach, thanks so much for having us. It's been no Jake problem. Harris, the coach for coach with Tim Arnold. Week two game of the week, Plainview versus Drill Dean. Check it out. 645 on SouthernTorch.com. This week's game of the week is brought to you by State Senate candidate Todd Greason, wishing the best of luck to the Plainview Bears and the Geraldine Bulldogs, football teams, bands, and cheerleaders this season. Pay political advertising by Todd Greason, P.O. Box 159, Outer Alabama, 35981.